Former Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition star Michael Giannoulis ran a massive scam with his partner in crime, Michael Williams. But it all came to a screeching halt when the Federal Trade Commission stepped in. A year after appearing on the show and losing over 200 pounds, he fell in with My Online Business Education, or MOBE. This Malaysian company specialized in getting suckers to pay thousands to learn how to sell classes that cost thousands. He found success with the company, but when they were shut down in 2018, he created his own similar scams through a business called My Ecom Club and ran them with his partner to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. The premise of these scams wasn't uncommon. The business promised eager suckers the knowledge they would need to set up six-figure internet businesses. The kicker was that their businesses were simply selling the same course materials that the suckers above had gone through. It was basically a pyramid scheme. It all came crashing down in March of 2020, ending with a large civil settlement with the FTC. The loss of personal assets tied to the businesses and a lifetime ban on the two mentoring or coaching people on how to make money online. The FTC level similar judgments against several other defendants tied to Mobe. Giannoulis maintained his innocence until the bitter end. He painted himself as a longtime business owner with multiple ventures under his belt and multiple podcast appearances. He started out selling poetry as a kid in Tarpon Springs. Kids running their first business often fail to stick with it long term, and that's what happened here. From there, he upgraded to a goat farm in Illinois, pulled in by a friend who convinced him to invest. Giannoulis purchased 500 pregnant goats to start up their ranch. When that venture sputtered, he moved back to the Tampa Bay area. Back on home turf, the serial entrepreneur traded big profit for a big frame, peaking at about 540 pounds. Desperate to shed his new weight gain, Giannoulis resorted to a reality TV show, ABC's Extreme Weight Loss. The branch off of ABC's popular Extreme Makeover series had more than a few success stories to its credit by the time Giannoulis reached out. At that point, his own efforts to lose the weight had fallen flat, leaving him hanging around 493 pounds. Getting on the show isn't as simple as phoning the producers and asking for a spot. Only the most extreme cases get in. The showrunners don't want anybody to attend the year-long boot camp unless they're looking to lose at least 50% of their total body weight. To put that into perspective, if somebody is 260 pounds in total and 100 pounds over their ideal body weight, they're not big enough. The prospective big losers have to attend an in-person casting call and audition for the producers. According to one account from a Michigan man who auditioned but didn't quite make it, the process is multi-tiered and emotionally grueling. You start out attending an open casting call with tons of other people. The producers pick out who they like, sometimes giving out VIP passes to skip the line. From there, you have to interview on camera and spill your personal journey to the crew. Moving further along, you must submit a home tape and get signed releases from family members. Our man in Michigan made arrangements to change his home for the show, only to be let down via a simple email after a long wait. Giannoulis, of course, did make it, and after one year on camera with personal trainer Chris Powell at his back, he showed his transformation. While getting rich quick schemes ultimately proved to be a weak point for Giannoulis, he found success with weight loss. He burned 255 pounds, blowing right past the show's half of your body weight goal. The whole time, Giannoulis told the same sob story over and over again. He'd never had a girlfriend. However, he finally had a lovely lady by his side when the show ended. With a girl named Megan on his arm and the massive weight loss behind him, it's easy to think Giannoulis had his happily ever after. To him, that wasn't nearly enough. His search for riches eventually led him to my online business education, the scam outfit out of Malaysia. Scammy gurus and shady organizations on the internet are eager for you to lay down cash to take their classes. In the end, all these classes teach you about internet businesses is essentially how to sucker people the same way you had gotten pulled in. These aren't outright illegal unless they're misleading in some way. The thing is, many are. Mobe was one such organization, and Giannoulis fell for their tricks. Mobe boasted a 21-step success system, making it look like a legitimate business school. The reality was that people paid the $49 fee to get in on the ground floor, only to be called on to spend more. The end game for the most dedicated suckers was to shell out at least $2,500 to move through the program levels. After spending over $60,000 
workers in some cases, they were expected to go into business for Moeb instead of for themselves, earning commission on the new subscriptions they drummed up. This bait and switch attracted the attention of the FTC, which was Moeb's first big mistake. Unlike most suckers in these types of scams, Giannoulos followed through with setting up scammy online businesses under Moeb and raking in millions. Williams did the same, and the two ran things together. Their success in the organization earned them recognition and valuable bonuses. The FTC's dedication to protecting American consumers led to Moeb's demise in 2018. The company had to pay fines and reparations to the FTC. Assets were seized from Malaysia, the United States, Costa Rica, and other scattered operations around the world. Over $23 million was returned to consumers who had been taken in by the scam. Moeb's fall should have been a sign. Get out of the scam world. Instead, the two friends soldiered on without the support of a larger organization. Giannoulis and Williams called their new venture My Econ Club. The pair ran a scam through the club that was similar to what they had previously done with Moeb. The big twist with this one was that they got family and friends on board to apply as owners of shell companies tied to My Econ Club. This blatantly illegal action called credit card laundering brought the two back into the FTC's crosshairs. The two created online ads, local events, and other forms of marketing that made buyers the same sorts of promises that Moeb had. The FTC suit claimed that My Econ Club even targeted vulnerable populations in the U.S. and elsewhere, like seniors and veterans. My Econ Club and associated businesses also stand accused of preying on poor consumers by convincing them to get loans, open credit accounts, and do whatever else had to be done to make membership payments. My Econ Club had a setup and pricing scheme similar to Moeb. The packages started at $2,000 on the ground floor and went up to $40,000. Allegedly, the pair brought their old teams from Moeb with them. Almost every detail was the same, even the salespeople badgering victims and setting up fraudulent sales funnels online. Giannoulis and Williams took in the lion's share of profits in their post-MOBE ventures. Giannoulis and Williams seemingly escaped the MOBE fiasco in one piece. When they launched their own scammy business ventures afterward, it took the FTC about two years to figure out what was up and shut them down. The FTC would have figured out something was fishy, but a few moves they made in between probably didn't help. For starters, Giannoulis liked to talk on podcasts. Of course, there were other publicity and marketing moves, but hopping on well-known podcasts was one of the loudest ways Giannoulis could have announced that he and Williams were back up to their old tricks. The first such appearance was on a show called Live the Fuel in April of 2019. The show was tied to a mid-sized online marketing operation called Fuel Up Marketing, along with several related foundations. While on the show, Giannoulis talked about his goat farm experiences, among other facts about his personal life. The appearance on Live the Fuel may have been relatively harmless, but when when Giannoulis appeared on the UpRev Ninja podcast, where he'd appeared before, Moeb got hit by the FTC, alarm bells went off. UpRev Ninja is a smaller podcast that focuses on personal growth and professional development, making a seemingly successful business pioneer like Giannoulis the ideal guest star. His 2017 appearance on the podcast was a typical come-up story, where Giannoulis talked about what he had done before and how he got to where he was at the time. The 2019 episode, meanwhile, was a bit more focused on Giannoulis' business strategies and approach. During that podcast, he said consumers will always be looking for a quick buck and business owners can use that to their advantage. He did say, though, that going that route doesn't necessarily have to involve lying. You just have to convince consumers that they're better off with your help than they would be on their own. That sounds like something a get-rich-quick guru would say, doesn't it? The FTC felt the same way. Word on how the FTC got back on Giannoulis and Williams' trail is sparse and barely mentioned on the record. It's not unreasonable to believe the FTC kept tabs on them after after Moeb fell, putting them on a scammer watch list. There's also a fair chance that a former Moeb victim, or even a jealous ex-partner, was listening to one of the podcasts when Giannoulis appeared to hawk his story and his business. In any case, the FTC somehow caught wind of what was happening. This mess eventually led to the FTC slapping the pair with a monetary judgment of $31.6 million. This was part of a larger case that included many former Moeb partners that went into their own businesses after the big organization went down. That judgment was suspended on the condition that the two pay out $760,000 in cash and give up assets tied to their MOB days and independent businesses. They're also banned from getting involved with teaching people how to make money or doing any business coaching, barring them from participating in similar scams in the future. Giannoulis and Williams are essentially unable to run the same hustle that they did before, but this doesn't seem to have discouraged Giannoulis. He's still running a web business, but this one's a lot more upfront and less complicated. 
He's got a website called Sinatris now, where users can pay $37 a year to access the library of nutrition and fitness videos and other accounts. The shady part? According to the Tampa Bay Times, the listed address for the business is a UPS store. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section who you trust more, people selling courses on the internet or President Biden.